on this one. And then we'll share. Great morning, Steve. Great morning, Gail. A beautiful Saturday morning indeed. It is. We're going to go share. Let's see. I think I have it set up. I'll be right back. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I'm grateful that you're here. Um, here we go. Go live. Go live. Oh, well, that's just, it says I don't have permission to go live. Isn't that crazy? Technical challenges by Facebook. Yeah. On my own timeline. Well, I guess, you know what? You and I are just going to record this and we'll just post it later for the replay. Welcome to the replay, everybody. <laughs> if you are watching this, you are certainly 100% guaranteed watching the replay. So yes, <laughs> welcome to the replay. Oh, so why are we here today? Why are we here? I, well, first of all, if you don't know my friend, Coach Steve Trezak, you've been under a rock. And I've said that many times because for the last... It's a very years, dark place down there. <laughs> don't, there's times for spelunking and then there's times to come up on board and, you know, into the light. Ah, we're <laughs> going to talk about that. Shining the light. Shining a spotlight on a certain area of life that, hmm... Why aren't there any changes happening? And so we can, we can use a, another metaphor of saying, hey, I feel like I've been in the dark for so long. And how do I take myself from the dark and bring myself to the light? And, you know, you feel stuck, you feel trapped, you feel like you've been in a rut. And we we're on a mission, I feel, Gail. We're on a mission to provide value that can help people that it's so simple. It's just simple application. Now we hear all the information. There's information everywhere, but what are you choosing to apply? What are you executing that's going to make either a subtle change or it can make a drastic change? Depends on how you interpret it. So I, I really enjoyed that thought. It's like, hey, let's let's take you from the dark and let's bring you into the light on these certain topics. And the topics are going to be... Today's topic is about... The effects of protein and water in the nutritional value of your daily life. And I started when I came to Arizona last November, I knew when I came here that, excuse me, I was going to join the gym. Less than a mile away, I walked in, I, I said, sign me up. Big, you know, Mitchell, I can remember Mitchell. I was like, nope. You don't have to go through all the details. Sign me up for the big one. I don't want to make decisions on what I can and can't do here. I just want to do everything that I want to do. Um, give me a personal trainer. And so that's where it started. And with that personal training um, opportunity, which I've never invested in myself that way before. So this has been an exciting journey. I had an assessment with um, this machine. It's like, it's this assessment the evil machine where you step on it and it measures all these metrics within your body. And that was November 1st of 2022. And every month, Jonathan, I'd step on and I'd, I'd have a reassessment and I really didn't pay attention to it. So my attention was not on the assessment. My attentions were not on the metrics. My attention was how many, how often was I coming to the gym? What was I doing? Um, what was I choosing to do and what was I doing outside activities? And I kept a pretty general diet, but when it was February 14th, fast forward, like two and a half weeks ago, I stepped on that same machine and my time now is coming down. So six months I had, I had six months in this gym. And my time is winding down. It's February 14th. I'm leaving the middle of April. And we looked at the assessment. And I remember Jonathan saying to me, what do you eat? <laughs> and uh, what made him ask that question? Well, because my goals coming into working with him were to, to reduce body fat, create lean muscle, and just have fun and be challenged. Those were, those were my goals. And my body fat hasn't really changed my muscle. I hadn't gained muscle, even though I was working out every day. 
And so he just was curious. He came from curiosity. What do you eat? Uh, and I knew from working with you over the last few years, I knew the answer. I just wasn't willing to face it until the light. Here comes the spotlight. Woohoo! <laughs> now yeah. it's time to be honest. And I said to him, I said, I know I should eat more protein and I should drink more water. And he said, well, how much protein? He said, well, do a protein. Do you drink protein shakes? And I hadn't. I have once in a while, but I hadn't been. I, he said, just do me a favor. Just just do a protein shake every day. Just because he knew that would increase my protein at least 20 to 30 grams of protein a day. And then I, you know, I had a conversation with you about protein and because this, this assessment said 170 grams. I, Steve, I don't think I was probably consuming 100 to 120 grams a day. So looking at this assessment kind of threw me off a little bit. And, and you helped me understand that it didn't have to be 170 grams. And we settled on 150. And this is what I want people to understand is when you start something, you don't have awareness around it because you haven't tracked it. You don't, you don't know what you don't know. Just like the assessment was showing, things weren't changing internally. And so I made the decision to put some attention. So I just started writing down everything I eat with a target of 150. Why did you have me, like, why did we settle on that? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I remember the answer to that question. Let's let's first talk about why is it important to be monitoring protein. Okay. okay. Now this goes across the board. This isn't just like hey because gym, like because Gail's in the gym because you're being more physically active you picked up your pickleball or maybe in this case you've reduced it because now it's a hybrid you're doing pickleball and being at the gym. This really applies for anybody that's watching this right now. Protein is king. Protein is the building blocks. For your organs, your muscles, your skin, your even your hormones, which people don't realize, it, it's essentially maintaining and repairing all of our tissue in our body. Okay, now when we say here protein, we usually associate associate that with like bodybuilders and people lifting heavy weights in the gym. Yes, but it applies to everybody. So that's why it's important that we are continually repairing and rebuilding at a cellular structure, our entire body. And that's only done through amino acids, which are found in proteins. So you're either in one of two states, either anabolic or catabolic. What's the difference? Anabolic is where my attention goes is feeding my body with proteins because I want more amino acids coming into my tissues than are being expended. When you're catabolic, it's basically eating away at your muscle because you're, you have less going, you have more going out than you do coming in. That's catabolic. So we always want to be focused on being in an anabolic state. And the only way to do that is by consuming adequate amounts of protein. Now I say adequate, I'm not saying more protein because I don't know how much protein you're taking in. It all starts with what are you currently doing? What is your current human behavior? And then we can meet you there. So oftentimes, this is the, one of the most common questions when it comes to someone that's looking to enhance and elevate the quality of their body, their physique, their muscular structure. They always ask, well, how much protein should I be taking in? Great question. And if you asked me this question 20, 25 years ago when I was starting off in the fitness industry, I would have been so excited to give you that answer and rattle off all my knowledge and my skills and my experience, which really wasn't much back 25 years ago. And I would be so, like, I was like dumbfounded. Like, I gave you the answer. You should be taking 175 grams of protein based on my mathematical calculations, based on your height, your body weight, your lifestyle, what your goals are. And then come to find out, they never tracked their protein to start with. So my question then goes, instead of asking this question, which is most common, how much protein should I be taking in? The real question is going to be that I'll ask you back is how much are you currently consuming? And then they sort of look, ponder, think, and they say, I don't know. 
So first is measuring your intake. So that, and that comes back to your question is how did we go from 170, which was what I felt was an automatic generated response based on this electrical impedance system that you stepped on this scale. It reads the densities of your tissue through your feet. You probably had a handheld device that you were holding onto. So it sent a very light signal through all the tissues of your body. You can't feel it. And then it would register things like your body fat percentage, your lean body mass. It'll tell you what your uh, what your fat mass is. Your we, we, I think what visceral fat, right? Some con- subcutaneous fat, and a, more than a dozen different measurables. You have to f- know where you're starting with your protein. That's the beginning place. So the reason why we chose. Did you already mention this? One fifty. Did you mention that? Yes. Okay. So we went back to the original question. How much are you currently consuming? And at that point, how much protein were you consuming when we were discussing that 170 recommendation from this assessment? Well, a rough guesstimate because I didn't, I hadn't been, tra- I, have, I have tracked my food in the past, my macro. You sure have. But I hadn't been, I was guesstimating probably between maybe 80 and 110 at the max, just based on sheer, well, lifestyle, Right. eating healthy, three meals, you know, three meals a day, basically, and, and always protein in the evening. And so that. But I knew, I knew when he asked me that question that it wasn't enough. I knew that I hadn't been consuming enough, but I also didn't understand why it was important. Like what you just stated, anabolic versus catabolic. I I didn't understand that because I didn't know it. We don't know what we don't know. And then when we have awareness, awareness is transformational. So when we when we create an awareness around what we're consuming and I, I like my niece reached out to me she says gail i'm sad and embarrassed i you know i'm i, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and i'm like don't be sad and embarrassed now you have awareness what are you going to yeah. do about it what are you going to do about it we our bodies are amazing vessels that can heal themselves as long as we move our attention to what's going to cause that healing to take place. And so for me, if I, if I really want to be lean, if I really want to be strong, if I really want to be weightlessness, then I have to make decisions for myself that are going to lead me down that path of what I desire. And 100 grams of protein is not going to do that when I'm in the gym five, six days a week, because you just explained, I'm probably tearing down my muscles because I'm not eating enough protein. (laughs) And so here I think I'm building them up and I'm, I'm not. So thank you. I learned some, something new today, just in a little brief conversation with you. And, you know, that's what I want people to realize is like, when you look at what, where you're at, Look at where you're at right now. And you have a vision of what you want in life. You have a vision of who you want to become, what what you want. Maybe it's what you want to look like, how you want to feel. And here's the thing. I, you know, I wrote down A, B, C, and D when I was like just thinking about this this morning. You know, one, one is making a decision that you want to make a change. Two is moving your attention, creating those new habits in your life that might seem hard at first because you're not, a, you, you're not used to it. You're used and finding people who have what you want and hang around them more and learn from them more. Mm-hmm. So, so if you can, if you can move your attention away from certain things that aren't serving you and, gaining that knowledge and understanding and moving in that direction slowly, but surely this has been a five-year process for me. I'm still learning. I'm a learn it all. Steve taught me to be a learn it all. And not, uh, not a know it all, (laughs) not a know it all. 
And so we we change. We change. We change. We can change gradually. We can change quickly. I changed quickly in the first, in that first year of knowing you, Steve, when we started the transformation method, I had dramatic change and I, I wanted sustainability and because if it's not sustainable, it's not successful. And I got down on myself a little bit over the last maybe nine months because I felt like I was regressing a little bit. You know, because I, I put a lot of attention on the scale and maybe maybe that's my awareness I'm gaining now that I don't really need to place my attention there as much as I had been. Well, I can place my attention there, but how it makes me feel is my control. And so I've learned from you that building muscle actually puts maybe some pounds on and I did put it. I have put pounds on, but. That's the beauty of, of knowing where you're at in this assessment. Even though I'm, I might be gaining weight on the scale, my numbers are going down in other areas that are important to me. And so, Absolutely. Um, but where do you find yourself and who, who are you hanging around with and what do you want in life? Really ask yourself, what do you want? I, I ask myself that this morning what do i want i want a lean body i want to be strong and weightless i i still remember when i was in the gym and then i stopped and then i was helping steve-o and the construction of the house he said man girlfriend you got to get back in the gym because <laughs> you were a lot stronger in helping me when you were there so see those things play in my mind and and so that's where my attention now is going and um, I'm just learning. I'm learning each and every day. I'm learning to control food versus food controlling me. And bingo right there. Right and there. Um, that's a that's I think that's a big challenge for a lot of people in life is, you know, we get in habits of consuming things that maybe aren't necessarily great for us. And we allow that to control us. Which is easier to overcome than people think. And I would really enjoy making this interactive. I know that we're recording this right now, but I think the more engagement we can get, and especially those that are watching that to this point, I mean, we're probably 20 minutes into our conversation here. If you're still here, thank you for being here because that means that you want to make change. You want to make expansion. You want to evolve. You want to grow in the quality of your life to some extent shoot us some questions. Like, what is it that you, like Gail had said, like, what do you want? Share that with us. What is it going to take for you to get there? And by the way, if you don't know what you want, you have to choose to sit in that question longer, sit in there deeper, find out what it is that you can't do now because you don't have what it is you think you want. Because when your vision is clear, so are your life choices. If you don't have a vision that's compelling, that inspires you, that motivates you, then you can't expect, I won't expect, the chances of you actually fulfilling the behavior is not going to last very long. Okay, so find out what that is and engage with us. And I'll be happy, Gail, if you're open to it, to do more of these conversations and actually address what people are seeking to discover and, and what knowledge they want. Right. Speaking of knowledge, let, let me address the knowledge because I feel like I was so close and I never got to complete the protein aspect of it because they were like probably ready to write it down. Like how much protein should I be really taking in? I never actually answered that question. So let me answer that for you uh, due to your patience, you know, so I appreciate your patience and allow me to answer this, but it's, it's going to, I'm going to give you a range. Let's be fair. I'm going to give you a range. And this is not a typical response that I would give because I really need to know what you're, what you're consuming currently. Like what is your, your current consumption? What is the current habit that you find yourself in? But the end result is this. If you are physically active, if you are in the gym, you're doing running outside, you are playing pickleball, you're breaking down your body with self-induced activity, then my simple recommendation 
is going to be, and this is not a prescription, it's a recommendation, is going to be one gram of protein per body pound. Real simple. Okay, so for example, if you weigh 150 pounds, my recommendation, not prescription, because I don't know other con the context of everything else, it'll be 150 grams of protein. Okay, shoot for, move your way to that, progress, transition to that, because chances are you're not even close to 150 grams of protein, only because you didn't know what you didn't know. And you're not bringing awareness to it. You're not focused on your protein consumption per meal, per day, per week. But at minimum, at minimum, we want to aim for one gram of protein per lean body mass or pound. But in order to have that, you must know what your body fat percentage is. So if you don't know what your body fat percentage is, then there's numerous ways to find out what your body fat percentage is. There's caliper tests, there's the bioelectrical impedance, you can do uh, a water displacement test. There's several ways to do that. Heck, you could probably just guess on what your body fat percentage is, but be honest, be honest with yourself. Take a look in the mirror. What would you say percent of your body is gonna be body fat? Then take that percent of the lean body mass and then that's gonna be what your protein consumption is. So for example, let's use the same 150 pound person and your body fat is 20% body fat. That means your lean body mass is going to be 120 pounds. You take, it's going to be 120 pounds, 120 grams per, of protein that you're going to want to focus on diligently, consistently per day to discover what the byproduct is of that level of commitment. Yeah, but Steve, I don't know what I'm taking in. Well, then put in the effort, put in the work. I am blown away how many 50, 60, 70 year young people I've spoken to in all of my career, in all of my experiences. And they've never thought like logically, like, let me just track one day of my existence of what I'm consuming. Like just one day, you've been on this planet for thousands and thousands of days. And you never decide to track just one day, one meal. And again, that's that's based on a lot of factors. Well, and and you know, I you don't have to go spend money to do it either. Google is a really fun Google is my friend. I when if I'm unaware and I don't know, I say Google, how many grams of protein in a mushroom? <laughs> and there's 1.6 grams of protein in two medium-sized mushrooms. Like it'll spit it out for you. So yes, it's you have to be intentional. You have to you have to make this important to you if it's important. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, right, label read. You know, on on the labels. I let's face it. For the first. 55 years of my life, I never read labels. It was like, oh, you can't do that. It's, it just seemed overwhelming. Well, you know what? If it's important, it's not overwhelming. And if you're looking for one thing, I know that the can of tuna in my cupboard has 42 grams of protein. And if I consume that can of protein, I'm a happy girl because I have a third almost of my protein in for the day. And so I'm finding, that's where I say, I'm learning to control food versus food controlling me. I'm learning to know what each thing that I'm choosing to eat consists of. So it's not a guess. You know, there's times we went out to a, a little potluck last night or happy hour and there were snacks out there that I didn't, I can't calculate. I had a few, I had a few meatballs probably had a few grams of protein, but you know what? Ah, the meatball. <laughs> there are, you know, and and really choose. I want to. I want to inspire you to to become prepared, to shop for your own food, to stop eating the processed foods that are out there that are not healthy and serving your best well being. To prepare your food each day. Um, to stop going out to restaurants all the time. You know, Steve and I, we were, we, we went out five to seven times a week eating out back in the day. 
we might go out and eat now once every month. You know, it's there are opportunities and times, but you can still be healthy. Learn if it's important to you. It's important to me. Control food versus food controlling me. That's a big deal for this girl. And I'm a work in progress. And we're all a work in progress. So start somewhere. Start, start yeah. somewhere. So, something will lead to something. Go from what Collins, I, I believe the last name's Collins. He has a book from good to great. And go from good to great. Like I am great at nutrition. I am great at macronutrient awareness. I am an expert, I feel, in this field. But I wasn't always great at it. In order to be great, you have you have to be good first. In order to be good, you have to be bad. And in order to be bad, you just simply have to start. Okay, be vulnerable. Gail, I am grateful for your vulnerability in sharing what you've discovered in your assessments, in your journey, in your progress, in your challenges, in your setbacks. But the vulnerability will set you free. Your environment, since we're talking about health, nutrition, our body, you no know, swimsuit season's coming up. Are you proud of what you've accomplished over the last five, six, seven months over the winter season and ready to just you know, let it showcase what you've, the efforts you put in, or are you still hiding? Are you still embarrassed? Well, I'm not embarrassed, but you're not certainly going out in your bathing suit, the one that you want to wear. Mm -hmm. No, your environment, your results, your body, take a look in the mirror. That is a direct reflection of you. And in order for your environment to change, meaning your results, the, the 3D world, you have to change who you're being. And if you're not one, I don't track my nutrients. I don't track calories. I don't watch my protein. I don't watch what I eat. That is a characteristic. That is a way of being that has produced a certain result, whether you like it or not. In order for things to change, you need to change. We've all heard that. It's kind of cliche, but simple. Not easy. Not easy. But, but it's so. simple. But it's simple. So the takeaway that I have to share, and since we're solely focused on the protein aspect, and I can certainly share water because that's a really easy one based on our entire conversation, is calculate what your protein intake ultimately should be on a focus aspect from lean body mass to your pure body weight. Okay. So same thing in this case, 150 pound person, 20% body fat, the range is going to be 120 grams to 150 grams of protein, but start where you're at. If this inspires you and you're like, you know what? Steve's right. Gail's right. Let me just spend the next couple of days and let me just track just my protein. Don't worry about carbohydrates. Don't worry about fats. Don't even worry about calories. Who cares? Focus on protein because once you isolate and hone in on the protein recommendations and requirements that you're setting for yourself, all those other things set, fall in place. Protein is not typically a processed food, but carbohydrates are big time and many fats are as well. If you're finding yourself, let's say I track today, it's 70 grams of protein. I'm like, oh, okay, that's not bad. And then just organically, you track the next day, it's 80 grams of protein. And then you put a little bit of effort in and you say it's 90 grams the next day. So you have a three-day span in which you're tracking your protein. It's 70, 80, 90, naturally organic. Then I would say, hey, 90 grams of protein? Can I sustain that every day? Can I consume 90 grams of protein every day? Because I've proven that I can do at least one day. And then you build yourself momentum. You start creating these little habits, these little pockets of food placement and this routine, these rituals through your eating patterns. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to go to, once you feel comfortable doing that, then I'm going to go to 110 grams of protein. And then you, you know, a couple of weeks later, you go to 120. Now you've created these baselines and made these transitional progressions. And that, that is sustainable. Because and you're what, gradually working your way up to that intention. 
And once you reach that, it's it's hard for me now to not hit 150 in only two weeks. This has only been a two week focus. And at the beginning, I like I was a little bit down, but then as I you know, just rearranged what I what I was preparing and how I was consuming and now now it's fairly easy to hit that and it's repetition, repetition, repetition. Imagine where I'll be in, you know, thirty days, sixty days, ninety days, and I'm in control of my food. Hydration, we didn't really cover a lot of that today, but you know, I knew also that I needed more water. And so my focus for myself is at least a hundred ounces of water every day. Um, and I know Steve, you, you drink 32 ounces in the first five minutes that you wake up every day. I know that it's routine, it's routine. Yeah. It's routine. And you've shared that. And, you know, we'll, we don't have time today to go into that because we just have run out of time, but we have things to do today on the Saturday morning. I'm going to celebrate a, my, nephew's second birthday today so it's going to be a great old time and my granddaughter is dancing in chicago and i gotta watch her online <laughs> so. here's what i'll leave you though one last thing with hydration let me just tell you if you're not taking in a minimum of a half of an ounce per body pound then you are robbing yourself of all the benefits that hydration has. Meaning again, if you weigh 150 pounds, if you're not taking in at least 75 grams of, or 75 ounces of water, and I do mean water, okay? It's not like out of soda. It's not from coffee. It's not gonna be from tea. I just, just go with plain water. And then you hear the complaints like, oh, I just don't like taste of water. You'll figure it out. Your muscles, our, our tissue is 70% water. So at least 70% of the fluids that you take in should be water. And we'll go over, perhaps we do a, a benefits of water and hydration episode next. There we go. <laughs> All right, but that's my tip for you. So there you have it. Please engage with us. Let us know what questions you have, whether it's about this or something else that's going to help drive your performance in your life because we, again, are on a mission and I know that we can help you get to where you want to go by you choosing to be the person that you know you need to be. If I had a mic, I might drop it right now. <laughs> so, All right. Let's go, Steve. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you. Love you. And you have the power to change to make the rest of your life the absolute best of your life. So let's get after it. We're out. We're out. Boom.